Let's talk about effective nuclear charge. Let's start our problem by writing out the full electron configuration for a neon atom, which is the atom we'll be analyzing throughout this example problem. By looking at the periodic table, we can see that neon has a full 1s sublevel with two electrons, a full 2s sublevel with two electrons, and because it is a noble gas, it will have a full 2p level with a total of six electrons. And if you add up all of these superscripts, 2 plus 2 plus 6, you see that neon has a total of 10 electrons, which makes sense because neon has an atomic number of 10. Now, let's move on to part B. Calculate the effective nuclear charge for a valence electron in the n equals 2 level. So to start this problem, let's draw a picture of the neon atom. In the nucleus, we have a nuclear charge Z is equal to 10, which is also the atomic number. And because we're looking at the n equals 2 level, and we know that the highest energy level in neon is 2, as we can see it in our electron configuration, we will draw two energy levels, or rings, surrounding this nucleus of 10 protons. In the first energy level, where n equals 1, we can see in the electron configuration that there are two electrons. So we'll draw in two dots in this part to represent those two electrons on that first ring. Next, in the n equals 2, we have to analyze this part of the electron configuration. So if we add up 2 and 6, we see that we have 8 electrons in this n equals 2 level. So a full n equals 2 ring here made up of 8 electrons. Okay, and so this is our picture here of the neon atom according to a Bohr model and representation of our discrete energy levels. So what this picture is showing us is that these outer electrons, or these valence electrons, are in some way shielded from this inner nuclear charge of 10 protons. And they're shielded by these inner core electrons, which are circled here, because they're blocking the valence electrons from feeling some of that charge. And because of this, they won't feel that entire nuclear charge. The valence electrons won't feel that entire nuclear charge. And even to some extent, the core electrons won't feel that entire charge, because each different, each separate core electron can even shield the core electron in its same energy level, just a bit, and it prevents it from feeling the entire nuclear charge of 10. And because of this, this is where effective nuclear charge comes in. By taking into account the shielding constant, we can come up with a more accurate nuclear charge. And because of the shielding, the effective nuclear charge will always be less than the actual nuclear charge. And so we can write out a formula for this. Z effective, where the effective nuclear charge is equal to the nuclear charge Z in the center minus a shielding value of S. And this shielding value, because it is subtracted from the nuclear charge, means that Z effective, or the effective nuclear charge, will always be less than the true nuclear charge at the center of the atom. So now let's try to calculate this effective nuclear charge for the N equals two level, or one of these outer electrons. But in order to do this, we need to know how to calculate this value of s. Let's write out what s is equal to. And we can really write it out as a piecewise function, because it has multiple values depending on what exactly you're analyzing. So we can say that s is equal to this piecewise function. Let's say that we are analyzing this outermost electron. For other electrons in the same energy level as that outermost electron, the same energy level n, they contribute a shielding value of 0.35 per electron. For electrons in one energy level lower than that, this outermost valence electron we're analyzing, they contribute a shielding value of 0.85. And we don't see an n minus 2 or two energy levels lower than whatever we're analyzing in the neon atom, but for an atom like argon, for example, you would see this. And for the n minus 2 scenario, 
it would contribute a shielding value of 1.0 per each electron. So let's apply these rules, also known as Slater's rules, for the n equals 2 valence electron in neon. We can see that I'm circling in yellow the seven valence electrons that are in the same energy level n as the valence electron we are analyzing, circled in red. So to add up that contribution, we'll calculate s here. Say s is equal to seven times 0 0.35, which is the contribution for each electron in the same energy level as the electron we're analyzing. And then we're going to add to that the contribution from the inner electrons, circled in green, or the core electrons. And this is in the n equals one level. And there's two of those. So those each contribute two Which contribute 0.85 to the Schilling value, which means that in the end, S is going to be equal to, if we calculate this, 2.085 plus 7 times 0.35, that will equal a Schilling value of 4.15. And this means that the effective nuclear charge or Z effective, will be equal to the nuclear charge Z, which is 10, minus S, which is 4.15, we just calculated this down here, and 10 minus 4.85 is equal to 5.85, which is our final effective nuclear charge for a valence electron and the n equals 2 level of our neon atom. Okay, now let's look at the next part, part D. Or actually, this should probably say part C, as it is our third part. Calculate the effective nuclear charge for a core electron in the n equals 1 level. Okay, so now we are analyzing the electron circled in red, a core electron in the n equals 1 level. So let's write out our same formula, that the effective nuclear charge is equal to the nuclear charge minus the shielding constant. And this one's a little bit simpler to calculate S for. The outer electrons of the valence electrons are higher in energy than the core electron, which means they don't contribute a shielding value to this core electron, as they don't shield the nuclear charge from this core electron. So only the second core electron contributes shielding value, as we can see from Slater's rules, it is in the same energy level and contributes a value of 0.35 to S. And we can even write that out down here. S is equal to 0.35 times, you can even say the contribution of one electron. And so S is equal to 0.35. And it's important to note this trend. For electrons that are higher in energy, Typically, there are more energy levels in electrons present between them and the nucleus where the nuclear charge is stored. And so typically, their S value will be much higher for valence electrons than compared to electrons that are closer to the nucleus or core electrons, because the valence electrons have many more electrons in between them that contribute shielding. So now let's finally calculate our effective nuclear charge, C effective, for the core electron and the n equals 1 level. It's equal to the nuclear charge of 10 in the neon atom minus our shielding value of 0.35. So 10 minus 0.35 is 9.65, which is our final effective nuclear charge for this core electron in neon. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.